Welcome back, everyone, to episode 25 of Ancient Mesopotamia, Portrait of a Dead Civilization. Uh, this is going to be a short video because we're talking about things that I know very little about. And uh, those things are mathematics and astronomy. So areas in school that I wish I would have studied more. But we're going to very briefly look at setting the parameters of this, uh, this study. And we're going to look at mathematics and astronomy. So Oppenheim opens with a statement that I think is absolutely essential. And if you get nothing else out of this video, then this quote and understanding what it means and applying it to your scholarship, I will die a happy person. Throughout this book, it has been my aim not to step beyond the limits given by texts and documents which I have read myself and judged relevant for the portrait toward which I have been striving. In the case of mathematics and astronomy, I have to restrict myself to a short report based on the presentation of experts who have treated these texts firsthand and have written extensively on them. In other words, I don't have an expertise on this. I'm not going to say more than I can about it. I'm going to intentionally restrict myself and rely on people that have an expertise in these fields. Oh, that we all had such wisdom. If we would all realize that while we want to know and should strive to know as much as we can about a variety of topics, when we're going to make definitive statements, we need to examine ourselves and say, what what expertise do I really have in this area? And should I be challenging the consensus view of uh, scholars in this field? Uh, and if I am, do I really have the expertise and the training to be able to do so? So when it comes to mathematics, there are several types of sources. There are multiplication tablets. Uh, they show squares, cubes, roots. Uh, their exponential function is, uh, is used to calculate interest, which of course was a very important thing for Mesopotamian scribes. And then there are problem texts. They're generally written in the second person, so you. Uh, they provide problems with facts and figures and step-by-step -step solution instructions. These were part of the scribal curriculum and the problems, there were often hundreds of them, and they increased, as you would expect in a pedag pedagogical text, uh, they increased from diff in difficulty from simple to complex. So you have multiplication tablets, you have problem text, there are other smaller groups, but uh, we won't we won't go into them here. I know that's very unsatisfactory, and uh, I apologize for that because there's a lot more, obviously, that could be said about mathematics. Um, I just don't feel comfortable going into the details as I haven't uh, I haven't done extensive research on it. Astronomy and mathematics are two areas of uh, of Mesopotamian studies of Assyriology that are actually very complex and uh, there are specialists that are in the field that go in depth into these areas. So I'm just trying to hit the highlights uh, in the same way that Oppenheim did. Astronomy. So there are early Sumerian word lists that contain lists of star names and constellation names. And so we can glean information about their understanding of the heavens based on these word lists. We can look into prayers that were made to various deities, including Nana, Nana Suen, who is the moon god, Utu, Akkadian Shamash, who is the sun god, and then Inanna Ishtar, the Venus star. Uh, and these texts, these prayers, reference a variety of facts about these heavenly bodies, these deities. And then finally, a significant source from the first millennium for understanding astronomy is the series Mul Apen, the Plow Constellation. This is a 7th century text. It is a two-tablet series, contains approximately 400 lines, and uh, there are simple, it's a simple star catalog. So it shows um, lunar, solar, stellar, and a variety of planetary phenomena. And so 
Again, there are a handful of people in the world that specialize in Molopin. I remember when I had to uh, read through and understand Molopin for my comprehensive exams during my PhD. And I remember having a conversation with my advisor saying, it's really tough to wrap your head around Molopin. And he said, yep, there are only a handful of people that do it. So it's very technical and uh, the language is actually terse and complex. And uh, of course, obviously it, it can be done and, and maybe we'll do a uh, separate video on mathematics and astronomy. I'll go into a little more detail, spend a little more time doing some research and putting a summary together. But uh, following Oppenheim's lead here, this is a this has been just a basic introduction to some of the mathematical sources that we have, the types of sources anyhow, and uh, the very basics of uh, what those texts contain. Oppenheim says, the interest of the Babylonian astronomer in the planets was governed by similar, more or less practical considerations. What were they? He was interested in predicting specific events, such as heliacal risings and settings and oppositions. The planets studied are Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, Mars, and Saturn. So very briefly in summation, Oppenheim presents a model that we should all follow. Stay in your lane, essentially, when it comes to making bold and definitive assertions about particular, uh, very controversial or complex subjects. Mathematical texts were often practical, involving the calculation of interest and solving word problems. Astronomy involved the study of lunar, solar, stellar, and planetary phenomena, and was often focused on predicting specific events. On Friday, our final video, we're going to look at an overview of craftsmen and artists, so stay with us. Until next time, resist poor scholarship. Always ask, how do you know that?